Ely Munoz and Ashley Thornburg. Ladies, so these ladies are dear friends of mine, right? I met Ely 25 years ago. How old are you? 22 years ago, right? Her husband came to me for a job and his resume said he was the number one, he had gotten the number one school teacher award in Dade County in Miami and I pushed the resume back. I said, I cannot take the number one school teacher <laughs> out of the school system. Stay in the school system. And he said, well, either you hire me or I'm going somewhere else, but I'm leaving the school system. I said, oh, okay, then I'll hire you, <laughs> right? And our relationship was born. Ashley and I met in South, well, you were in Orlando, right? And we, you came down and we met and we chatted and both of your careers have just blossomed. So share with the audience the asset classes that you both work on. So I am by day a residential realtor Knowing that market very well, I decided to start investing in townhomes. What market? Charlotte, North Carolina, which is where I live. And how long were you a realtor before you said, I think there's some deals here that I should take advantage of? Probably four years. Four years. And did you have some thoughts in the third year, but you had some concerns? I didn't have concerns other than the fear of failing and losing the money. Right. Yeah. Like, what if my instinct and my knowledge is not what I think it is, mm -hmm. right? And did you, act, did you go to people like a spouse or friends and say, I think I want to do this, what do you think? Yes, I went to my spouse, and he's always very supportive, but he had a lot of questions that made me think. I was ready to jump in and just do and figure it out. He's very methodical and he was asking questions and he kept asking me for numbers on a spreadsheet, show me how it's gonna work. You needed and Natasha and Nikki for that, right? Yes, yes. So very hesitant. I never did put the numbers on the spreadsheet. I was just like, I know I, I would get a piece of paper and just put numbers down really fast and like, it makes sense, trust me, I know what I'm doing. There's, and I felt like there was a big need for, for great housing that was affordable for somebody that would be a single mom, that would be a police officer, that would a firefighter. Because in our market, so my product is really B and C product in an A market. Mm -hmm. I really look for good schools. And there's a big discrepancy between what's available for rent in the A market, it's all luxury rentals, and what somebody who really wants to move their family forward or their family situation has changed and now they don't have the same amount of money to put towards housing. There was a really big need for that. So the townhouse that I get, as soon as I buy one, I upfit it. Make oh, it we're gonna get there. Oh, okay. Before you get there, yeah. when did Alex come on board? We love our spouses who are supportive yeah. of us. Yes, we love our spouses. When did he say, okay, Oh, he trusted me. He trusted my scratch piece of paper. He so just, right away, he, so the first one, he was me. like, I'm good. It took him a while, because okay. the numbers didn't make sense to him, and I'm like, trust me, trust me, trust me. I know what I could do. So how many do you have right now? I have five. Okay, was it the second or the third one where he stopped asking questions? Probably the third, and the third was the thorn on my side. Okay, awesome, okay, so <laughs> and when, we're gonna yeah. get back. Okay, okay. <laughs> Ashley, talk about supportive husbands. Yeah, so my husband was actually the one that pushed us to invest in real estate, and I thought he had a very interesting perspective. He's an attorney, and I do retail leasing and asset management for my day job, and he said, listen, I can only bill so many hours, and you can only do so many deals. So if we're going to create additional income for our family, I really think we need to invest in real estate. And we started by keeping the house he bought in Orlando when he was a bachelor before he met me, and then we moved to Miami, and he said, I want to buy the biggest house that we can afford, which is what we did, and investing in that house is, was really the impetus for us to be able to do everything else we did, because we had equity. So when we went to the bank, and they looked at our debt to income ratio, and they factored in the equity that we had in our primary residence, 
we then said, okay, well, five years in, we want to renovate the house. And then that led to us buying a house to live in while we were renovating it. And I said, well, if we kind of do a trial run on the house we're going to live in while we do our house, what if we don't like the countertops, we can know that now. Well, we weren't ready to do our house and we had a tenant in place. While we found the first one, there was a second one and I said, talking about instinct, I said, we had already closed on the other one and I said, we have to go buy that other house. And he said, why? We already have a place to live. I said, trust me, we have to buy that house. And at appraisal, it was valued 130,000 at, at closing, at appraisal, over what we paid for it. So that was the beginning. Yeah. Awesome, okay. We have some pictures, right? Yes. yes. Our properties are very, very different. Yes. But they're all great and they so, all make money. So this is one of my townhouses, and the first thing I do is go in and change everything. If there's popcorn ceiling, I remove the popcorn ceiling. I remove all the carpet. I put hard surface floors. Who does this work? Well, because of my day job, I have really good resources with contractors. My vendors love me. I love on them. So it's great. They will jump. If there's a plumbing issue, if there's anything, they will jump to fit me in. Right. So that, uh, you know, newer appliances and typically this is going to be nicer than what is in the area at this price point. It's very hard to find. There's very selective townhouses and I choose townhouses because the exterior maintenance is included in HOA so it takes some pressure off of me and I can still keep my day job at the same time. At some point, I would like to not have my day job and do this full time. And do more designing also, yes. right? You, yeah. you have started a design firm. Yeah, well, I We're working consult. On it. Yes, <laughs> okay. Yeah, so just the you hard You can keep going, yeah. that's another one? So that was my first townhouse that I bought. And it was a smoker living there, it was gross, they had pets, and so I don't know if there's pictures of the keep interior, going. but. Next slide, it please. Looked, so I bought that townhouse for about $140,000. Right now, if I were to sell it, it's worth three twenty. dollars And in my breakout session, so I finally put, preparing for this, I finally put pencil to paper with a spreadsheet. And <laughs> I've always had the spreadsheet ready with the formulas. Eric always helps me, thank you, with the formulas on the spreadsheet. But I never used it because I was so adamant, like, oh, I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. And back I... of the napkin, yeah, when we were doing the <laughs> prep calls, because I don't have any spreadsheets, I'm a back of the napkin girl. I go, well, me too. And then she goes, but maybe I should do it for the breakout room. And then she comes up to me yesterday, you're not gonna believe this. So I blew my own socks off when I looked at where that townhouse has That's, ended up. That's a tweet. So on that townhouse, I have a 46% return on investment. Wow. On that little thing. It's the first one. Yeah, that was Alex the first like, one. Are you sure? Yeah. And until this day, he says that the residential that I've done beats all our other investments. Right, because you guys invest in some other things. Yes. We have a big diversification. Yes, we do. Hotels. Yes. Restaurants. Yes. Commercial, multifamily. Yeah. yeah. But, but the residential yeah. is the, the winner. The residential has the best return on investment. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Ashley. Okay. So you're going to see pictures of short-term rentals. So we evolved from, we grew our Coral Gables residential portfolio to four properties. And then I was going to get a $3,000 a month increase on one of my Coral Gables properties in 2021. And so we spend a lot of time in North Carolina outside of Asheville. And my husband said, I think it's time for us to buy a house. The interest rates are really low. We know we want to spend more time there and kind of retire there ultimately. So let's go ahead and start looking. So the first house you'll see is that house. And I was almost going to cover the mortgage payment with our increase in rent. So that made that decision very easy because you know, it was no pain for us, right? So the 3,000 increase in the Gables was going to cover the mortgage payment for North Carolina. Correct. So that mortgage payment is 3,800 a month. So, so you're like, no brainer. No but did brainer. you have to put a, a big down payment? 20%. Okay. That's it, 20%. Again, in the breakout, Ely and I will talk about this, but one of the things about residential is there are a lot of opportunities because there are uneducated agents and there are crazy sellers. So uh -huh. therein lies opportunity. And at some point, if you've been on the market for a year and a half and you've price reduced five times, nobody's looking at you. And that was the situation with 1190 Laurel Ridge. So you can, you'll see some before and after pictures, but we didn't really do a lot. We painted, we restained the floors, but we had to furnish a 6,000 square foot house. So we did that over the summer. 
at appraisal, so this home is 6,000 square feet, sits on seven acres. The appraisal was just for the home and the one acre. That was 100,000 over the purchase price, and each acre is about is worth about $30,000. So we had about 280,000 in equity just going into it. That particular asset gave us a 7.8% cash on cash return last year. Remember, we are there maybe 12 weeks of the year. We use it ourselves. And I think it's a one and a half X at this point of what we've gotten back in if we were to sell today. But that, when we left that summer, we said, we have to rent this. We can't just let this house sit here. And I put it on VRBO. And from September to December of that year, I had seven bookings. All of my expenses were covered retroactively through February of the next year. And then we realized, wow, we're onto something. So did that demand continue or was that the COVID hangover? Nope, we were then by December, I had the weeks blocked that we were gonna use it in the summer and we were booked, 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 booked. And so the realtor called us that we had used up there and said, hey, listen, I have another opportunity for you. There's this house that we had looked at. There's a federal tax lien. If you can meet certain requirements, you know, you're going to get a really good deal on the house. And we said, well, gosh, there's demand. And even if we sell it down the road, you know, we know there's demand. And so that is full. All the, I mean, it's full. I will say, listen, we have to talk about the good and yes. the bad. The market is down this year. You know, people are making plans much later. There, our bookings are down, but again, we're going to cover our costs and make money no matter what. It just might not be the 22% return we got last year, right, on the ones that we rent out all the time. So we never planned to do this, but it's been, it's been an exciting journey, and I think, you know, many of you all in commercial real estate, our day-to-day -day isn't always that exciting. There's a lot of greed. There's a lot of backstabbing. There's a lot of deals falling through. How many days do you just... Put your head in your palm and say, why am I doing this? And I will say that the joy that has come out of, and I think, you know, hearing your stories about being able to help, you know, the firefighters and single moms find housing. When I get emails or reviews, you know, we watched 101 Dalmatians that we watched when the kids were little, and we all gathered together with the grandchildren and watched these movies. It feels so good, and that's been one part that I've really enjoyed about this journey. And so, you guys have to see the pictures because yeah, so they're you, still in my townhouse. Yeah, go ahead and scroll <laughs> through some of the slides, please. Her property is beautiful. So, and so we have three short-term rentals now, Carolina Luxury Rentals outside of Asheville, Maggie Valley, Canton, and then another property in Canton. And some of, I know Natalie has stayed. So we, some of our wire folks have Carrie. Women so. in real estate, wire. So, yeah, so happy to share in the breakout kind of the numbers, but you'll see, you know, the, the data. Slide. But this produced oh. a 22% return. This was the one where there was the federal tax lien, and we had 100000 in equity at appraisal on that one as well. And then the third one we bought because we wanted to round it out, it kind of fit the criteria. What's um, the criteria? So for us, it's five bedrooms, minimum five bedrooms. It has to have a hot tub or ability to have a hot tub, mountain views, and just general accessibility and somewhat secluded. So all three, it's either the last house in the subdivision or it's down a private driveway. Now, do you have a management company that cleans it? Like, do you run it all? Because I know that there's some, of, some people I know in the room that did this made a lot of money, but it was a lot of work. So you have to, I think the nice thing about short-term rentals is it is scalable, and that's why we have scaled it, because whether you have one or three or 10, in a way, it's kind of the same amount of work. It can be really annoying. The third one is in a subdivision. There was a gate. You had to call from the gate. And I said to the HOA, it says gate code. Can you give me a gate code? Oh, we don't do that. And I said, but you know, I live in Florida and, you know, you have a visitor code every... Well, this ain't Florida, honey! <laughs> so it took me four months to get a gate code. And if you know flying in and out of Asheville, there are very early morning flights and very late night flights. And so I would literally have to stay up till 1230 at night for the people to get to the gate, to buzz them in. <laughs> so I do self-manage. And like Ely, you know, you build your team of vendors and you know who you can rely on. And I have 
envelopes with cash at Christmas and when I'm up there and I slip them 100 or 200 or gift cards because I want them to call me first. And listen, you're in the mountains. Someone was saying earlier, Hawaii, if it's a good surf day, Alex, right? You know, if it's fishing season, they don't care. They're not showing up, you know? So you have to get them to want to return your call. And someone else was saying about the, oh, Nitty, about, you know, you're doing the GC work. Listen, your money is made in your sweat equity. That's just the truth. And so you just have to decide, am I willing to take less and pay a management company? Or am I willing to travel with the tile in my suitcase? Because that's where you're making the money, right? That's why you're making the 20 some percent, not the 10% or the five or the eight or whatever. A hundred percent. So I have a partner who I've been partners with for since 2008. My friend Barry Belmont, his wife Kim is in the room, and he would rather hire a group of guys from Philly and drive them down in a rental car to put up the Christmas decorations at Weston Town Center than hire a company that does it for thousands of dollars. I have learned so much from this person, from this partner of mine, because he thinks about that. And he's like, they're gonna charge $20,000 for the Christmas lights. I'm gonna hire five guys I know that was in the flower business, put them in a rental car and drive them down and they're gonna put up the Christmas lights. So it's important and sometimes that's not the right decision, but, many, but you, all, you should always figure out what is the difference, right? And so are you long-term holder? I am. Until someone walks in and offers you a crazy price. I'm not there yet, so okay. I'm not thinking about it. Are you a long-term holder? We are long-term holds. Unless someone comes in and offers you? No, because I just finished Alex, actually, your son. We, I yeah. have a house on, I mean, sorry, Eric just saw on my flip on Saragossa. Yes. Okay. Yes. He so, told me about it. <laughs> so this residential flip that, that we just finished and we just put on the market for rent and Eric said, I saw your son. I thought I didn't know that was you. I had a call to, to sell and I'm not selling. Why? Number one, how are my kids gonna afford to buy a house in Miami 20 years from now? Uh, I'm at a four and a quarter interest rate. I have a million and a half in equity and I'm assessed at very close to what I bought it for. So if I sell and I go buy something else, even if I 1031, I'm buying an asset that's now double the price, double the tax assessment. I'll never make the margins. Like you're, now all of a sudden everything's reset. So I will hold and I will rent and I will recoup my costs and maybe in 10 years when I've made back my investment, I'll consider selling, but I'm gonna make the same when I sell today that I would 10 years. Why am I not gonna recoup my rehab costs? Are you guys, have you refinanced? I did, I refinanced four out of the five properties. And did you get all your original equity out? I don't know, that's not on my spreadsheet. Can we applaud the honesty? <laughs> yeah. Can we applaud the honesty? Have you refinanced? We have, and I also want to give a shout out to Valley Bank because Valley um, was our lender for three of our refis. And when I tell you that decision changed our life, that decision changed our life and was what enabled us to then proceed with all that we built in North Carolina. Did I introduce you to them? You and Jessica Malcolmson. Good job, Jess. Yeah, yeah, Jess had a shopping center. If you guys remember that we're here, when I interviewed Jess on Women Investor Wednesday and also here on stage, where she got left at the altar and she, like right before closing, freaking out on her first deal. It's always bad when you get a problem like that on your first deal. That happened to me on my first deal and I called my friend Ivy and she goes, don't worry. And I, told, I gave the same advice to Jessica. You're, they don't want to start with someone new. They're going to give you an extension. But yeah, the lender was like, mm, not happening. And I said, call Valley, call my friend Jordan. Maybe he can help. And he did. And then, okay, so see, this is why you're a sponsor. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so we have to always talk about lessons learned or advice for the audience, right? What's your best advice for, let's say there's someone in that lives like in a Charlotte market. They love your idea, firemen and single mothers. What's your advice for them to get started? So my biggest advice right now, because prices have gone up so much and interest rates, the numbers are not as favorable as they were when I started. My biggest advice is to look at it as a bill. Even if you have to pay $300, $400, $500 a month right now, it won't always be that way. You look at it as a bill like if it were a car payment but just do it. You mean the mortgage? Yeah, the overhead, the mortgage, the expenses. Just start because it will catch up. Don't wait. 
to invest, invest and wait. And wait. Yes. yes. That's my biggest advice. And my, my 46% return on investment I'm on that first time. I'm, I'm so excited. I put the, she, the numbers She found this out yesterday. So That's proof. But how do they get started? Let's say they live in a similar town like Charlotte, and they live in a house, and they like to design, and they think they want to do some improvements. Where should, how can they even just start? Where should they start? Should they, they call should start, a realtor? They should start by calling a realtor that has experience with residential investing, and they should. Are there realtors out there that have experience with residential investing? Yes, I'm one of them. Okay. <laughs> Is every market have one of those? I believe so. How they do they do. find that person? They have to call. They just have to call. They have to research. They, you know, the internet is a great resource. It's on my bio, so it should be on okay. your agent's bio okay. when you go to to the website. And then website. just start looking at homes. Start, but know also what, speak know to how a much lender. Money. Yeah, you need to speak to a lender, and you need a good lender and a good real estate agent. Great. Okay. So I agree. Just start. So I also had never done any numbers until Beth asked you know, us to participate in this because it didn't matter. We weren't losing money. So how much we were making, it didn't, it was irrelevant. And our Coral Gables rentals, the early, well, I guess the latest of, well, the first of which we bought in 2016. So this is either eight or less year, years of a hold time. We have, the return is between 320% to 500%, okay? <laughs> So if we sold today, right? And again, we've already cashed out, that's included in that return. But you look at your own personal residence and you say, wow, like, you know, my thought is wouldn't, I'd love to have five of those, right? And unlike the stock market, you're just not putting in what you, you're not only investing what you're putting in, you're getting the benefit of the 80% that you're financing. So now if that appreciates 20%, you know, you get the benefit of it appreciating on the whole investment, not just the 20% you put in. And I would just say- Right, we're, so 100,000 buys you 400,000. And that, I guess in the stock market, there's this thing called options. I have no idea. But it's way better in real estate because you have, an, you know, you spend 100 and you get 400 of value. We, we've quintupled our investment. I mean, that's a big deal. And then it's what allows you to roll it into the next thing. And I would just say, you know, find the market you want to be in and stock Zillow. Save the homes. There is so much of info that's available to you. Take advantage of it and find the uneducated agents. I mean, there are some. You work with them. I mean, you, you interact with them. Yeah. You do deals with them. And find the stale listings because those are the crazy sellers. And it may be a difficult transaction, but I'm telling you, that's where you find value. And you had a savvy agent to call you to... Who wanted yeah. another commission. Exactly. <laughs> what was that story? That was the tax lien. But let me, let me tell you about how things can go wrong. We had a 90-day close on that. In order to do that deal, we had to do a cash offer. That house was a $960,000 home, okay? That was a cash purchase. We knew we could do it. But we have a very good relationship with also City National Bank, who is the, the banker is one of our best friends, we had no concerns about getting the loan. So we signed the offer on a cash basis and we knew we had 90 days to close, no problem. Guess what? This was end of 2022. You could not find appraisers. You could not pay them enough. Well, guess what happened? End of January, I said, can we get an extension on the closing? Can we just need one more week? They said, no, you will lose your $90,000 escrow. So thank God we had the ability to close and then the, the bank ended up, you know, putting the, the debt on it about three weeks later. But that was a huge risk and did not go the way we thought. But there are risks. And it, did you have that money or you went out and found we it? We had the money, but that was kind of the, that was, the extent of our liquidity. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it was one of those things where, okay, Chris, how much longer till you know, we're signing these loan docs and getting this wire. Cause you know, it yeah. was, it was, that was scary. a little scary. That was awesome. scary. Yeah. Is, are these fascinating stories? Are you guys enjoying? Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> <laughs>